So as an introduction to uh, OPV devices, we just want to point out that this is a recently uh, commercialized thin film PV technology. So it has moved beyond the research and development stage. And uh, very soon, we can actually uh, use these uh, thin film OPV uh, devices. So what are thin film PV devices? In general, a thin film PV device will consist of a thin semiconductor layer. This is typically about 0.1 micron thick and one micrometer is one millionth of a meter. This thin semiconductor layer is deposited on a large area and low-cost substrate such as glass or plastic. And if it is deposited on plastic, then the device could be bent or flexible. And the thin film materials which are also used for making PV devices include amorphous silicon, usually written as a silicon, and then poly silicon, as well as cadmium telluride and CIGS. This is a so called chalcogenite semiconductor. It consists of copper, indium, gallium, and selenium. But in this tutorial, we will only focus on organic PV devices and materials. So in this slide, we show the schematic diagram for a thin film PV device. This is a generic diagram. It is applicable to any thin film PV material, including, of course, the OPV materials. What you see here in the uh, schematic diagram is a glass substrate or a plastic substrate and on this glass substrate there is a transparent conductor layer so light can pass through this layer and it can also conduct electrical current. On the top of the transparent conductor layer there is an important layer called the absorber layer. This layer will be described in more detail in the next slide but basically this is where all the PV action takes place. As a result of that you get an electrical voltage indicated by the blue arrow. So when light shines on to the thin film PV device, this device will behave like a battery. You will get a voltage across the two terminals and current can flow if you connect a load such as a resistor between the two terminals. So first of all, why do we want to use OPV devices? Firstly, uh, OPV devices, they are made from synthesized molecular organic semiconductors. The main difference between the organic semiconductors from amorphous silicon or polysilicon is that the material consists of individual molecules instead of a crystal. And another very important reason why we use OPV is because these materials 
can be dissolved in organic solvents such as chlorobenzene or solvents like that to form a solution. A solution is like a water, is a liquid. So we can uh, use very low cost solution processing methods such as spin coating where we put the solution onto a plate and rotate the plate at high angular velocity and the centrifugal force will then produce a neat thin film. Another very important solution processing method is printing where we use for example an inkjet printer and literally print the absorber layer onto the substrate. The third important reason is that the optical properties such as the absorption properties can be adjusted or tuned by molecular structure design through synthetic chemistry. This cannot be done easily with inorganic semiconductors. So next we will uh, talk a bit about the most important layer in an OPV device. This is the absorber layer. The absorber layer in an OPV device performs two very important functions. The first one is the absorption of the incident sunlight. That means the photons in the sunlight is taken in by the thin film layer. And after that, because of the PV effect, the energy in the photons is converted into charge carriers. And there are two uh, kinds of charge carriers in any semiconductor. These are called electrons, which are negatively charged, or minus, and holes, which are positively charged uh, charge carriers. So because the absorber layer has to conduct both electrons and holes, so the absorber layer will have to consist of two components and these are called donors and acceptor. So in the absorber layer of an OPV device, you will have both donor and acceptor and they are in contact with one another. And when this happens, they will form what is called a junction. The proper term is actually the heterojunction, but we can simply call it the junction between the acceptor and the donor. And this is where the OPV effect occurs. So in this slide, we will uh, just explain what are donors and give some examples. A donor is an organic semiconductor with p-type conductivity. And by p-type conductivity, we mean this semiconductor is good at conducting holes as a electrical current. And the role of the donor in an OPV device is to give up electrons to the acceptor, which is the second component, so that the hole can be conducted to the uh, anode terminal. In the lower half of this slide, there are several examples of 
donor organic semiconductor materials. The first two, and they are copper phthalocyanin and pantocene. These are what we call small molecule organic semiconductors. Their typical molecular weight is under 1,000. If the molecule is much bigger, then we call them polymers. And the rest of the uh, examples shown on the slide are semiconducting polymers. The first one is called a P3HT, and this is the most widely uh, studied uh, semiconducting polymer with a donor property. An earlier example of a donor uh, organic semiconductor is called MEH PPB. The name is usually for these uh, polymers are usually quite long and therefore we use abbreviation to designate these uh, polymers. The last two uh, polymers shown on this uh, list are more important today because they have what is called a narrower band gap and they are able to produce devices with the highest PV performance. So next we will explain what are acceptors. An acceptor is an organic semiconductor with n-type conductivity. So here the material is good at conducting electrons. And the role of the acceptor in an OPV device is simply to accept electrons from the donor and conduct the electrons to the cathode terminal. In the examples shown below, we have three important acceptor uh, materials. The first one is called a C60. This is a cage-like uh, carbon molecule. It is one of the allotropic forms of carbon discovered around 1990 and is also referred as the Buckminster Fullerene. The last two examples <coughs> on this uh, list are PC60BM and the heavier PC70 BM. These are molecules which are cage-like, just like the uh, C60, but they have some side groups attached to the uh, cage-like uh, molecule. And as a result, both the PC60 BM and the PC70 BM, they are soluble in an organic solvent. So we can make a solution of PC60BM, for example, and mix it with a solution of P3HT and make an OPV device. Uh, notice that there are far fewer acceptor or N-type materials than donors. And this is because it is much more difficult to synthesize these N-type materials than the P-type materials. We come to the end of the first part of this tutorial. In part one, we have explained what are thin film photovoltaic PV devices, and in particular, the organic PV devices. We have explained the unique properties of OPV materials and introduced the two important types of OPV materials. These are the donor and the acceptor materials.